All right, all right. All right. Good morning, everybody. This is Reverend Essie of New Birth Ministries, and we're back on the radio live. Amen. Give me a second so I can hook up some things. Uh, God bless you this morning. Hallelujah. And I hope that you have a beautiful day. Amen. Thanks for coming on. God is good as always. God is always good. Amen. There's nobody good like our God. Amen. Hallelujah. So let me pray in. Uh, if, if before we pray, if you want to know ahead of time what to turn to, turn your swords to Mark chapter two. I'll be preaching today from Mark chapter two. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Heavy, Heavenly Father. We thank you for today. We thank you for the sunshine. When man means for it to be dark, the sun still comes out and gives us joy. And we thank you for loving us. We thank you for loving the unlovely times where you really should have turned your back. We thank you for forgiving us of our sins. You are an awesome, outstanding, loving, healing God. You're the creator of all things, king of all kings, Lord of all lords, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. We thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross the way that you did. Nobody else would have did that for us but you. And we love you. We cover this session today, our first session back on the radio, and We cover it with your blood, Jesus, and we cover everybody that's on now or those that come later. We cover them and their households and everything under their hands with the blood of Jesus, everything you've given them to take care of, everything that you put their name on. We cover it with the blood of Jesus, and we command everything evil sent their way, uninvited, to go to the very pits of hell in Jesus' holy name. I ask, Lord, that you use me, Holy Spirit of the Most High God, the Ruach HaKadosh, use me to preach this word to whoever may hear it worldwide. For those that are accepting Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for opening up their eyes and sending them because it's nothing that we did. It was a calling of the Holy Spirit as they listened to the word. We thank you for this day in your holy name, Jesus, and amen, amen, amen. And we also lift up the prayers. Remember to lift up the prayers of all the prayer requests that we received uh, since we met each other, uh, you know, the last Sunday, or we see each other sometimes online. Remember to pray for people and pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Amen. So I'm going to discuss something today, and the title is, What would you destroy to be with Jesus? Amen. What would you destroy to be with Jesus? So let's turn to Mark 2. Amen. Mark chapter 2. Hallelujah. And I'll be reading from verses... Uh, 1 to 13. First, I'll read it out. I'll read out verse 1 to 13. Okay, Mark 2, 1 to 13. It reads like this. And it says, And again he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come near to him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, why does this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? 
And immediately when Jesus perceived by his spirit, in his spirit, that they so reasoned with themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether it is easier to say of the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, and take up thy bed and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he rose, took up his bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were amazed, they were all amazed, and glorified God, saying, we never saw it on this fashion. And the last verse 13, it says, and he went forth again by the seaside, and all the multitude resorted unto him, and he taught them. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> he taught them. This is awesome. Hallelujah. People question. They want to know, how is he doing this? And, and why is he doing that? And it's impossible. And, and you, if you notice, the Sadducees and Pharisees were always around. Amen. Now, this chapter, impl- this book implies that Jesus is God and that faith in his power can lead to not just a cure of physical uh, ills, but to a forgiveness of sin. Notice he forgave him of his sins. In verse 5, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. And after he did that, he told him to pick up your bed and walk, and he picked it up and walked. Amen. There's some things that we experience in life, and it comes on us because of sin. Now, a lot of us don't want to admit that. Nobody wants to hear that. But there's a lot of us that are going through things because of sin. It never hurts to ask God to forgive you. You know, they say, well, you're forgiven of your sins already. Yes, we are forgiven of our sins already. But what about that time we cussed? (laughs) You know, we just cussed and say, oh, well, I cussed. What about that time somebody might slip back and do a little drugs or whatever? And uh, are you okay? You know, you you, for, you ask God to forgive you. Amen? You don't want the devil to bring anything up to God that you have done or said that can cause you to suffer from it. In verse 1, this was not Jesus' first visit to Capernaum. Notice it says, and again. Amen? Israel's most sacred Christian pilgrimage is sites where believers can sit on a stone benches. I saw it. I was watching Perry Stone the other day, and he showed what it looked like, and it is beautiful. They sat on stone benches in the ancient synagogue where Jesus was believed to have sat and walked. You know, I saw something online yesterday and today. For some reason, it keeps coming online. And it says, if you uh, uh, had a all-expense-paid trip, where would you go? And I just keep writing Israel. I would love to go to Israel. Wouldn't you love to go to Israel and walk where Jesus walked, be baptized where Jesus was baptized, and see the things that you read about in the Bible? Amen. In 2000, Pope John Paul II visited this site. So it's an important place. It's an important place, and everybody knows it. Amen. Jesus lived in Capernaum for three years. The word biblically means, watch this, ready, city of comfort or the field of repentance. Wouldn't you love to live in comfort and in repentance? Okay, in repentance. Just talk about this. In repentance. That's what's wrong with people today. People do not want to repent. There are people right now who have done things to us. And instead of just repenting and apologizing, they stay away from us. You know why they stay away from us, God's people, when I say us? They stay away from us because, one, they're like children, and they know they did wrong. And they don't want you (laughs) to tell them what to do. They know they're going to hear it, so they stay away from you. They try not to engage in a conversation with you because they know that you, with your quote, unquote, high and mighty self, or what do they call us, greater than thou, you're going to correct them. The Bible says reprove, correct, and they know it's coming, so they would rather stay away from us, 
than to hear in the word of God that would cause them to repent. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. City of comfort. We try to live in comfort. How many times have you just tried to live privately, personally, quietly, peacefully, and the devil sends something into your life every time? Do not worry about it because Jesus already fought that battle. Satan just wants to see if you believe it. Keep it in prayer. Amen. Verse 2, Jesus, his fame brought many people to him. What man could not do, Jesus was doing. Okay, man was living on the law of Moses and and, and all the laws they made, you know, the the Pharisees and Sadducees, the priests, they were making laws and you could not do this, you could not do that. And on a Sabbath, you couldn't flick a light switch and you weren't allowed to work on a Sabbath and you couldn't do this, you couldn't do that. And see, what happens, it causes man to work, think that his works uh, are, are important. It's like every Friday, you hear that, you know, Israelites, they get together, Jewish people get together, and they do all the work they can to get everything, and they prepare for the Sabbath. Amen? That's works. We are supposed to rest, and we are supposed to enjoy the Sabbath, but we are not supposed to feel like we were forced into that rest. Oh, my God. Amen? He was thronged by the multitudes of people. The anointing attracts. When someone has the anointing, it will attract people to you. That's why you have to be very careful. The churches that you go to, the males and the female preachers that you see standing up there, there are some people who are attracted to them. Okay, but what they don't realize is it's lust. They are they they're, they're, they think they're in love with them. They think that's supposed to be their husband. That's supposed to be their wife. But what they don't understand is they're spiritually attracted to the anointing. Amen. Amen. Jesus was received by the people. Are you received wherever you go? Are you received in your life, in your ministry, in on your job, in your household, even? You know, in your neighborhood, there is going to be people who may not receive you. I should have said newsflash, right? Everybody's not going to receive you. I had a hard time with this, and thank God for a lady that told me and my daughter who, who talks to me. We have really good talks together. We reason things out, and it's very, very true. You cannot please everybody Okay, and there's going to be some people who don't like you. There's going to be some people who won't listen to you. That's why we have so many pastors and preachers and teachers and apostles and and evangelists in the world, because everybody's not going to listen to one. The one they don't like, then go over and listen to another one. Amen? So everybody's not going to receive you. That's okay. Okay. What's happening is they're giving up their healing by not doing so. The people who wouldn't receive Jesus Christ in this little place where he was preaching, okay, didn't get their healing. You know, you go to Jesus for healing. Amen. Jesus said wherever he was at, there was healing. If you want healing, you'll show up. Amen. If they want healing, they'll show up. So the ones that don't come to you, they're not going to receive the healing that God may be using you for with them. Jesus had the power to forgive sins, and so do we. Everything in the Bible is there so that we could learn from it and use it and do the same things, good things. Many may not come to us because of personal reasons. They don't want us calling them sinners. (laughs) Or calling out their sins, as I said earlier. People refuse. Who are you? Who is Susan that she's going to try to tell me I did something wrong? Well, you did something wrong, and you owe Susan an apology. She's not going to beg you to come back and talk to her. You have to be man or woman enough and apologize and set things straight, set things right. Amen? If you sin, you sin. If you dog somebody, you dog somebody. Amen? 
Because they say, who do you think you are? Who does she, Susan think she is to tell me what I did wrong? That's, a, you know, that's pride. And, and the Bible says, God resists the proud. And, and verse 3, and they were come unto him, bringing one sick of palsy, which was born of four. There were those with persistent faith. They had such persistent faith that they brought their friend to Jesus. Notice, he didn't go to Jesus on his own. He was, he was sick of the palsy. He couldn't get around. But guess what? He had good friends. What are your friends like? Would your friends take you, if you were ailing in some kind of way, would your friends take you to Jesus to be healed. Think about your circle. Think about the people that you hang with. Amen? Would they do what these people did to help you get the healing that they believe you can get? Amen? Verse 4, could not get near Jesus. They took him there, but they couldn't get to him. There were so many people there, they couldn't get to Jesus. He was strong. There were people all around him. So what did they do? They tore up the roof. They uncovered the roof. Okay, think about this, right? These are really, really good friends. They love each other. We don't know if they grew up together or what family. We don't know, but they love this person. When someone is ailing, we are to love them. We are to love them so much that we will lead them to Jesus. We will take them to Jesus. Amen? Amen? Never get happy because somebody is ailing. Amen? We are to give them that chance to go to Jesus, and if they don't, it's not on, the blood is not on our hands. Amen? Think about it. They tore up another man's property. Okay, so they, in other words, they worried about the lawsuit later. They wanted their friend. They, this is zealousness for Jesus. Do we have that? Do we have zealousness for Jesus? Or do we allow the television, the radio, and everything else to, to change the way we feel about healing, change the way we feel about Jesus, change the way, you know, some people aren't even sure that they truly believe. These people had a zealousness. They tore up somebody else's property to take their ill friend, their sick friend, to this Jesus that they loved so much and believed in so much. Amen. They let him down, the man with palsy. Amen. They showed great energy. And this is how Christians should be. We should show, we, people go around, oh, yeah, I'm Christian. Yeah, I go to church. Yes. Oh, God is good. <laughs> That's nice. Okay, but do you show energy for Jesus? Amen. Do you show enthusiasm? Amen. And that's what faith is. That's what zealousness is, showing great energy and enthusiasm in pursuit of a cause or object, uh, objective. What is our, okay, um, you had a great singer. There's singers, uh, as, you were, as we were all growing up, we had uh, groups that we were enthusiastic, enthousi- whatever, about, enthused about, right? And there were like actors and actresses uh, that we were enthused about. Um, even political leaders, you know, people loved Obama so much, you know, that they were trying to turn him into a Christ. Amen. Do you love Jesus that much? Do we love Jesus so much that nothing else matters? We'll go to court later. You know, okay, they're, okay, they're, 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 pro, they're um, persecuting Christians right now, and we understand it. We are going through persecution as well. If you're alive and breathing, you're going through some kind of persecution. But are you going to let that stop you from going to Jesus, from talking to Jesus, having a relationship with Jesus? Amen. No. Why? Because you have a great energy, enthusiasm for Jesus. There are some things he has done for us in our lives 
that we just cannot let anything else overshadow. Okay, has anybody stolen your zeal? Don't let anybody steal your zeal. Amen? Uh, are we embarrassed to be zealous? I don't want anybody to think I'm one of those Jesus freaks. Yeah, I don't mind. If somebody thinks I'm a Jesus freak, that's great. Because they have, you know what? In this world, they have called us le- uh, worse. They have called us worse. Amen? Hallelujah. There's so much pomp and circumstance in church anymore that they've taken away the power of God. They've taken away the healing. People are going to church and just showing up for numbers and paying their tithes or putting money on the books or whatever they do, the bookie, you know, with the bookie of the church, you know, and, and, and there's no power. Nobody's getting healed, not just physically, but spiritually, financially. Amen. In their families, there is so much, too much legalism, too much ritualism, and too much ceremonialism in churches. Amen? Tear up, as we should say, destroy the roof. Amen? But we must first bind the strong man. Tear up that roof. Get rid of the barriers between us and Jesus. Amen. There's so many barriers between, you know, there's a lot of people who aren't getting saved today because there's so many barriers there. What must I do to be saved? Well, first you have to take step one. And after you take step one, try two and three together. And then if that works for you, you do real good. Go to step four. Skip to step 11. You know, we don't need all that. All you have to do, there's no steps, no pump, no circumstances. All you have to do is is believe in Jesus Christ and ask him to forgive you of your sins and ask him to be your Lord and Savior. Amen? And tell him, I believe you died on a cross and rose three days later, and you're saved. Amen? Verse 5, when Jesus saw their faith, the faith of the man's friends, that is, he forgave the man. Can you imagine? Can you imagine how happy Jesus' heart was when he saw these people tearing the roof? You talk about you ever, back in the day, in college days, he used to say, raise the roof. The roof is on fire. No, they tore that roof up. They, they just tore it up, put a hole in it, and dropped the man down to Jesus. Imagine how wonderful his heart felt when he saw that, their faith. I'm sure he said they have good friends. Can he say that about us today? Can Jesus say today we have good friends? Who are you hanging with? Are they carrying you? Amen? Are they helping you? i tell you what. That man must have been worth it. He must have really been. Ask ourselves, are we worth it to our so-called friends? Are you, would your friends do that for you? Are you worth it? Would your friends tear something down to help you? Do they love you that much? Or do they just love you because you drink with them in a bar or you, you, you eat with them, you eat it all. Everybody, everybody's an eater, right? Or, or you, you, you know, they love you because you work with them or they have, they just, we got to know the difference between someone really loving us and somebody just liking us. There's a difference between those two L's. Amen? I know some people that like me too, but I can't call them and ask them to take me to the hospital if I'm sick. You better call a cab. Amen? Amen. we got to keep one another lifted up in prayer, folks. This is a picture, when you read this story, it's not even really a story, it's real. (laughs) When you read this, it's a picture of the redemptive work of Jesus Christ. You and I are the lame man, helpless and paralyzed by our sin. We've all been in that place. Amen? Sometimes our sins can have us so paralyzed that it takes someone else to lead us to the freedom 
in Christ Jesus. This is why preachers preach. This is why teachers the word of God. This is why I do it. So that I, I have my sins forgiven and I want other people to know that they can be healed by having their sins forgiven as well. Let go and let God. Amen. Tearing the roof is tearing the veil. V-E-I-L. Amen. When Jesus died, the veil was torn from top to bottom. The Bible says the veil rent. That means ripped. God did it himself. If the earthquake did it at that time when Jesus died, it would have been bottom to top. Amen? No earthly priest is needed to beg for our forgiveness. We ask God to forgive us ourselves. Amen. No longer gone are the days you have to pay money to somebody to be forgiven of your sins. And we ought to all thank God for that. Amen. Hallelujah. You can go straight to the throne. The Bible tells us to approach God, go straight to the throne and talk to him. Amen. The song says, have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your troubles. Amen. Go straight to the Lord. Amen. Anyone can enter God's presence through the blood of Jesus that was shed to pay for the wages of our sin. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Sin causes sickness and many other illnesses and sufferings. Everybody wants to blame the devil for what they're going through. But what did you do? What kind of invitation did you send to him to get in that situation? Not not everybody. Amen. I mean, not everybody. But we have to understand that God wants us to repent of our sins. That's very important. And this is what's going on now around the world. Nations of people, countries do not, they left God out. They don't think they have to repent anymore. Forgive us, of Father, forgive us of our sins. They don't want to say that anymore. They're like the people that hurt you, and they don't want to come to you and apologize. So they suffer for it. They run from you. I would not want to live the kind of life where I have to run from somebody Because I hurt them, and I don't want to apologize. I want to be able to walk up to everybody and give them a hug or something or shake hands or whatever and say, hey, how you doing? God bless you. How you been? Amen. Jesus tells us in Mark 2, 17, I have not come to save the righteous but sinners. In verse 6, the scribes reasoned Christ's divinity is, once again, is being challenged, challenged today. Are we going to continue to allow the devil to challenge our Jesus? Are we going to continue to let him? Don't let the devil ride. If you let him ride, he'll want to drive. Amen? When someone challenges your belief in Jesus Christ, you tell them, mind their business. I love the Lord. You can't change my mind. Amen. The song says, this is war. Amen. You can't have my family. You can't have my increase. You can't have my children. You can't have my faith. Hallelujah. I bind you, Satan. You're not going to talk me out of my faith in Jesus Christ. God is good to me. Amen. And then we're talking about the sin of unbelief. Write down Matthew 13, 58. Let's go there first. Matthew 13, 58. I just want to read these to you. Amen. And then I'll be done. Matthew 13, 58, which says, I don't know, I'll start with 57. 
and they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country and in his own house. They did not have faith in him. Your own country, your own people, your own town, your own house, hallelujah, is not going to have faith in you. So like uh, uh, some couple people I know that love me told me, don't worry about it. They didn't have faith in Jesus. They're not going to have faith in you either. Now go to Matthew seventeen twenty. Let me see. Yeah, Matthew seventeen twenty. And Jesus told. This is when they, they were trying to cast out the demons. And, and Jesus said, and Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith, a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you. Howbeit this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. Unbelief. You cannot bind the strong man as long as you're operating in unbelief. The devil's going to laugh at you. He's going to be, I bind you, Satan, in Jesus' name. And them demons are going to look at you and go, really? Are you sure? You know? They want to know if you truly believe that. And that doesn't mean you have to scream at them, but just say it. When you're saying it, feel it in your spirit. Amen? And lastly, Mark 6.6. I'm there now. Mark, it's going to Mark 6, 6. Amen. And it says, hmm, let's start with four. Now let's start with three. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph of Judah and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. Oh, my. But Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without honor except for in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. That tells you right there, amen. Verse 5 says, and he could there do no mighty work. He did works, but he couldn't do mighty work. I do works in Jesus' name. Some of y'all listening to this, you do works in Jesus' name. But the reason you can't do mighty works, the reason some people don't get up out of the wheelchairs, and the reason some people don't raise up out of those beds and, and take them home with, it, is, and with them is because they don't believe in you. They have unbelief. So don't blame yourself if you pray for somebody and they don't get healed. Because they think it's magic. When they hear you saying it, they're like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm covered. Oh, that was great. But they don't look for the healing. They don't believe in it. When somebody prays for somebody, they get up. Many times you see in the Bible when the, when the apostles, when Jesus prayed for somebody, they said, get up, move. Show that it made a difference. Get up and walk. Shake your hand. Bend your knee. Amen? Back, move your back backwards and frontwards. You know, claim that healing. Amen in Jesus' name. He could not do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands on a few sick folk and healed them. See, a few, a few. See, some got healed. Verse six says, and he marveled because he marveled because of their unbelief, and he went round about the villages teaching. You know what that means? He marveled because of their unbelief. He was like, what do we say online today? SMH. Jesus said, shake my head. Mm, mm, mm. Amen. And that's just, I, I, that's how I feel sometimes when I pray for somebody and, and, and I'm, I'm really praying, I'm feeling it in my spirit and I'm not praying just for the sake of, you know, saying some words and say I did it. I'm praying because I really want that person to be healed and then nothing happens because they didn't receive it the way they should have. They look more on it as magical words. Hocus pocus. Amen. And lastly, verse 8. Chapter 2, verse 8, and it says, and immediately when Jesus perceived the spirit today, reasoned with him, he said unto them, why reason these things in your heart, whether it's easier to stay sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven, or to say, rise and take up the bed and walk. But you know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the sick of the palsy. Now, if Jesus had power on earth to forgive sins, you mean to tell me he's greedy and doesn't want us to have it either? He just didn't want him to have it. Jesus left it for us. Amen. And he, I said unto thee, arise, I say unto thee, arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into thine house. And immediately, immediately, sometimes if you notice when there are healings in the Bible, heal, that's why sometimes heal is with I and G. Healing. Takes a minute. 
And the, the Bible says, and within that very same hour, did you ever notice that sometimes when healings went on in the Bible, says, and, and, and within that very same hour they were healed, like as in, I believe, the centurions. Jesus said, and, and it says here, and immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, in so much that they were amazed. And once again, they're amazed. And glorified God, saying, we never saw it on this fashion. And I'll end with verse 13, because I did believe, I originally wanted to go to 13. And it says, and he went forth again by the seaside, and all the multitude resorted unto him, and he taught them. Let God teach you. Don't just listen to a preacher and say, oh, yeah, I listen to him. I listen to her. Yeah, yeah, I got my, got my word in. <laughs> I got my word in. Okay, yeah, that's good. But what did you get from the word? What did you get from the word? Amen. Are you saved? Amen. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior? If you haven't, just say this. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I believe you died on a cross and rose three days later. And I accept you as my Savior. There's none greater than you. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. And amen. And if you said that, God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Go find a Bible believing that believes in praising the Lord, worshiping the Lord, talking in tongues, amen, dancing. Now, some overdo it, but the Holy Spirit will show you that. Some people overdo it, and some people, I went to a church one time, and everybody was talking in tongues. I couldn't hear the preacher, and that, that wasn't, you have to know when to leave, right? Amen. So find a good church. Learn about God. Learn about Jesus. He wants you to come to him. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. Hallelujah. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And remember to pray for Israel. Jesus said, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for Israel all those grafted in, and as far as the world is concerned, pray that the world gives their heart to Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Join in with me. Let's be in this army together. I like to say Marine. <laughs> Super fine. Thanks for coming on today, and I pray that your week goes by victoriously in Jesus' name. Reverend Essie signing off. God bless you, and have an outstanding day. To God be the glory for the things he has done. Amen.